dear students welcome to this lecture on digital logic and system design in the previous lecture we have seen registers which are the storage devices for a digital word or a binary word just as a flip flop is the uni is the is the unit for storing a single bit if you put a few flip flops together you get a register which is capable of storing a, a digital word or a binary word so we will continue with that in fact uh, this particular design of a four bit register with parallel load we have seen on the previous turn in the previous lecture but i am just hurriedly going through it in order to connect with what i am going to discuss uh, today so over here we are employing sr registers so if this uh, first of all let us see this one when the clear terminal is pulled low then all these flip flops are clear to zero they are reset to zero and this is asynchronous input it doesn't depend on the clock so whenever clear is zero since this is all active low they'll all be reset to zero that is about clear now when this clock pulse is uh you know is high this is inverted right so when the clock pulse is low this gets inverted and all these flip flops will become active right now coming to this load control when this load control is zero since this is being fed to all these and gates so all these outputs of the and gates will be zero zero and we know when we give sr as zero zero uh the, the flip flop retains its previous state qt plus 1 is qt so the previous strain will simply be retained so no loading will take place it is only when clear is not pulled low when the clock pulse is low and load is high now these and gates will become active so this i will be fed to s and i1 dash will be fed to r so if i1 is 1 10 will be fed it will be set so this i1 will get stored here likewise i2 if it is 1 it will be fed to s and i2 bar will be fed to r if it is 1 this will be 10 so it will be set that means 1 is stored if it is 0 then a 0 comes to s and a 1 comes to r so it gets reset to 0 so whatever is i2 that gets stored likewise i3 gets stored here i4 gets stored here so i1 i2 i3 i4 they are called the parallel inputs to this register right so this is how this works this particular four bit register with parallel load works next we are going to see register with parallel load using d type flip flop right previously we have seen uh, rs flip flop now we will see a d flip flop once again the clear terminal asynchronous whenever this is low it will reset all these d flip flops to zero now this clock pulse is inverted and fed to all of them so it is only when the clock pulse is zero you know this will be active uh, you know all these d flip flops will become active now talking about this load terminal when this load terminal is zero what happens and, and the clock pulse is low when this load terminal is zero the zero will be fed to this particular and gate right and uh, sorry this zero that means this is high and this is low so this and gate this and gate this and gate and this and gate all of them will become inactive only this and gate will become active and what this is getting is a1 only so this a1 will recirculate back to d1 so basically d flip flop will retain its state similarly a2 will get recirculated back so whatever was the previous state that will continue to be the next state likewise a3 that will be recirculated simply because we are getting this load terminal as low and so its inverted version is high so this and gate gets enabled this and gate this and gate this and gate they get enabled and all of them they recirculate back their corresponding outputs 
so no loading takes place right now when the load terminal is high now this will be zero this line will be zero and this line will again be high now the upper end gates to all of them will be inactive so that means their own previous state will not be circulated rather it will accept i1 it will accept i2 so i1 i1 will get into d i2 will get into this d flip flop i3 will get into this third d flip flop and i4 will get into this fourth d flip flop so once again the parallel loads are i1 i2 i3 i4 and these inputs will be loaded into these d flip flops whenever the load terminal is high and whenever the load terminal is low then their own previous state gets circulated back to uh, as its next state so this is how a register with parallel load using d flip flop will work once again this design is modular if you want to extend it to more than 4 bits you simply have to you know rep replicate this ith unit whatever be the ith unit you replicate it as many times as the number of bits you want to store in that register with parallel load right so this design is pretty modular in that sense next uh, you know till now what we have seen is a register which is capable of loading some n bits right n bits of data n bits of binary data they can store there are special types of registers which are called shift registers these shift registers not only load but also they may shift left or right the data that they are provided with this shifting is a very useful operation because whenever you do shift right then whatever be the binary number that gets divided by 2 and whenever you shift left whatever is the number you have previously there that will get multiplied by 2 you can take a few examples and see for yourself shifting right would mean divide division by 2 and shifting left will mean the multiplication by 2 right so shift registers are important in that sense and many other senses you will get to realize why shift registers are so important but right now let us see what shift registers are all about right see over here whatever be the data in this d type flip flop will get shifted right to this d flip flop because the q of this d flip flop is being given as the d of this flip flop similarly q of this d flip flop is going to the d of next flip flop q of this flip flop is going to the d of next flip flop so suppose you had a zero here when the next clock pulse trailing edge comes this is negative edge triggered so trailing edge means from 1 to 0 going edge will come then this zero will come out from this q and will be fed to this flip flop if suppose this flip flop had a one previously on the occurrence of the trailing edge of the clock pulse this zero uh, will get stored into this flip flop so whatever be the data after the occurrence of the clock pulse the same data will get shifted right right suppose you want to have a shift register with shift left then correspondingly you will have to feed this q to this d this q to this d and this q to this d right also there are the serial inputs and the serial outputs because whenever you are shifting data from this register to this register there is some data that should enter here that may be zero that may be one whatever but that will be treated as the serial input similarly you will get the serial output one bit at the occurrence of every trailing edge of the clock pulse just as we had the parallel inputs in this uh d d base d flip flop base register or a parallel input in this rs flip flop base register you have a serial input in the shift registers right so it may be shift left it may be shift right it depends on how you design it next we are going to see a very interesting shift register this is a 4 bit bidirectional shift register with parallel load see it has got lot many things here and once again you will realize the importance of multiplexers now you know 
I just want to you to quickly recall that a multiplexer is a combinational circuit that directs one of its inputs to the output depending on the status bit that is supplied. Now consider this uh, function table. When S1, S, S0 are both 0, 0, that means this S1, S0 is being fed to all these 4 is to 1 multiplexers homogeneously. So that means the 0th terminal of this 4 is to 1 multiplexer is coming to the uh, to its output, 0th of this one is coming to its output, 0th terminal of all of them will come to the output. Now what happens? The 0th terminal of this flip-flop is simply receiving A1 back. 0th terminal is receiving A2 back, 0th terminal of this multiplexer is receiving A3 back and this one is receiving A4 back. So basically no shift or no change is happening right when s1 s0 is 0 0 because the multiplexer is at the 0th uh, terminal that means when s1 is 0 the status signals are 0 0 it is simply circulating back its own data its own corresponding data now come to 0 1 when 0 1 is fed to all all these 4 is to 1 multiplexers Terminal 1 gets directed to the output for all of them. Now what is terminal 1? You see terminal 1 of this 4 is to 1 multiplexer is receiving A2. So whatever was there in this flip flop that will get circulated via this 4 is to 1 multiplexers into this D flip flop. So basically shift right has taken place. Similarly A3 by its terminal number 1 is getting stored into this flip-flop a4 is getting stored via this terminal one into this flip-flop so effectively shift right has happened and the terminal number one of this four is to one multiplexer will receive the serial input for shift right so that is why i'm writing zero one is shift right right now one zero is shift left let us see how 1 0 means the second terminal of all these 4 is to 1 multiplexers are being directed to the output. Now what is this 2? 2 is receiving A3. The second terminal of this 4 is to 1 multiplexer is receiving A3. So A3 is coming in the next clock pulse as A4. Similarly A2, you know A2 is coming as A3 and A1 is coming as A2. So basically shift left has taken place, shift left has taken place, right? And this will be the serial input for shift left, right? So whatever was there as A3, that will go as A4, whatever is there as A2 will go as A3, and whatever is there as A1, that will go as A2, and A1 will receive a serial input for shift left. So I say that 1, 0 means shift left. Now 1, 1. 1 1 means terminal number 3 of these 4 is to 1 multiplexers all these 4 is to 1 multiplexers will be directed to the output so what is it receiving it is receiving the parallel input right i4 i3 i2 i1 it is being parallelly loaded when the mode control stat status lines are 1 1 right it will receive its it's uh, you know um, uh, the parallel data will be fed to it in these two cases serial data is fed shift right shift left serial data and there is no change in this particular case now again this design is such that you can have a lot of functionality you can in fact shift left or shift right by more than one bit in the same clock pulse using this shift register in the previous case as we have seen here, if you want to have more than one shift, you need to have those many clock pulses, right? One shift will happen in one clock pulse, two shifts, two clock pulses will be required. Suppose you want to shift this data to this one, so you require two clock pulses. And suppose three shift, three bit shifting you want to have from this D flip flop to this D flip flop, you need to have three clock pulses. But over here, you can even have shift right by two bits or shift left by two bits or three bits or four bits whatever you want to have you can have it 
the only thing is that you will have to increase the size of the multiplexer accordingly since i am having two status line four is to one multiplexer so i have four options suppose i want to increase the options here i'll have to make it eight is to one multiplexer with three status lines then i can have as many as eight combinations possible i can add like you know shift right by two bits then shift left by two bits we can also have circular shift right or circular shift left what we do in circular you know we feed this serial uh, um, output back as serial input it becomes a circular shift so whatever is here that will come to this one whatever is here that will come to this one and this data will come to this one and whatever was here will get fed back to this serial input so that is how you can also have circular shift right or left both suppose you want to have to you want to have a circular left shift that in that in that case this d will be fed to uh, this q will be fed to this d this q will be fed to this d this q will be fed to this d right and then since it is shift shift left so everything is moving this way so this should come over here msb the most significant width bit will become the least significant bit so likewise you can have eight different combinations if you want to have if you are employing an 8 is to 1 multiplexer in that case you can have shift right or shift left by two bits or three bits or you can have circular right shift circular left shift circular right shift by two bits right suppose you want to have more combinations you can employ a 16 is to 1 multiplexer you can have as many as 16 different options possible and everything is happening in the in a single clock pulse that is the beauty of this shift register so that is why people also refer it as a barrel shifter and there is a special name given to this type of a shift register that is called a barrel shifter right so this is how we can have a shift register now next we will get to design a bcd ripple counter we've already seen the modulo 16 ripple counter in that case we have we had employed a, a t type flip flop in which you know the the least significant uh, t flip flop was receiving the clock pulses to be counted but then the d uh, uh, q of the least significant bit was fed as the clock to the next uh, flip flop ne next t flip flop so we've already analyzed this that was about modulo 16 ripple counter in which we employed four different t type flip flops now suppose i want to have a bcd ripple counter how do i design a bcd ripple counter bcd means i am counting in decimal binary coded decimal so i should have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 0 right modulo 16 means 0 1 2 3 4 5 15 0 after 15 it gets reset to 0 but over here basically bcd ripple counter means modulo 10 counter 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and back 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and back okay so a bcd counter may also be called a decade counter so you can have multiple names bcd counter decade counter modulo 10 counter and it can be designed both as a ripple counter as well as a synchronous counter we will see the synchronous counter later right now let us see how an asynchronous or a ripple counter can be designed so this will be the state diagram in order to make things more clear 0 to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then 0 back again so it keeps counting you know, bcd counter decade counter it keeps counting from 0 to 9 and resets back now how do we design a bcd ripple counter you know we have employed the jk flip flops and then the least significant jk flip flop receives the count pulses to be counted and both its terminals are being 1 1 right now the next for the next uh, flip flop it receives whatever is the q of the least significant jk flip flop that will be fed as the clock pulse while its k terminal is still one but j terminal receives q dash of the most significant bit why do we do that we will come to it right 
so these are the points q1 is complemented on the negative edge of every clock pulse why negative edge because it's a uh, it, it is an active low jk flip flop so q1 gets complemented on the negative edge of every count pulse whenever the count pulse happens i'll show the state show you show you the state diagram in the next uh, slide but it gets uh, the very design says that it gets you know uh, complemented at every clock pulse because it's both jk terminals are one one q2 is complemented if q8 is equal to 0 and q1 goes from 1 to 0 q2 is cleared if q8 is equal to 1 and q1 goes from 1 to 0 similarly q4 is complemented you can see for yourself q4 is complemented when q2 goes from 1 to 0 q4 that is complemented when q2 goes from 1 to 0 right and q8 is complemented when q4 q2 is 1 1 and q1 goes from 1 to 0 q8 is cleared if either q4 or q2 is 0 and q1 goes from 1 to 0 right let us see uh, these points in the next clock pulse this is the timing diagram of the bcd ripple counter right so as we said for q1 it toggles at every trailing edge of the count pulse these are the count pulses so you see if it was zero here it will go one on this trailing edge again it will go zero on the next trailing edge it will go back to one on the next trailing edge back to zero on the next trailing edge so zero one zero one on every trailing edge of the clock pulse right now coming to q2 you see q2 is basically receiving the input from here right so k is one but it will toggle when q dash or q a dash is uh, one right when q q a dash is one then only it will toggle right so q a dash right if this is q8 then q a dash will be the complement of it right will be the complement of it so it toggles at the negative edge at the first negative edge right and then it it remains so for two consecutive clock pulses and then it toggles again because q a dash is still you know one right it toggles as far as q a dash remains one it will keep toggling at every negative edge of q1 right because k is already one j as far as j remains one it will keep toggling at every negative edge of q1 and what is q dash this is q8 dash so q8 dash is high it is zero here so it, it, it will remain high right till this far it will remain high so it will keep toggling at every negative edge of q1 so it will toggle from zero to one at the negative edge one to zero at the negative edge and then zero to one at the negative edge and then one to zero at this negative edge now at this point q8 has gone high so when q8 goes high q8 dash goes low and when q8 dash goes low that means this is zero this is one so it gets reset q2 gets reset and remains reset till this is pulled back low again right so that's that is how q2 operates now coming to q4 now q4 it toggles at every negative edge of q2 right because both of them are one one so it toggles at every negative edge of q2 so if it is zero negative edge of q2 came it toggles negative edge of q2 came it toggles right so q q4 is pretty simple it is very similar to q1 the only difference is that q1 toggles at every negative edge of the count pulses whereas q4 toggles at every in uh, negative edge of q2 right every negative edge of q2 it toggles negative edge of q2 it toggles right by negative edge i mean the edge going at the edge from 1 to 0 now coming to q8 you see again q8 is having k as permanently 1 but j is the and of q4 and q2 right so it remains zero it will it will get into the toggle mode and it gets toggled by q1 right it gets toggled by q1 so since uh you know since q4 and q2 
q4 and q2 right this is q4 and q2 so i see i see that q4 and q2 is 0 q4 and q2 is 0 q4 and q2 is 0 q4 and q2 is 1 only at this point of time at this point of time because both of them are 1 now onwards from this time onwards before that either one of them is 0 so that will remain 0 now it will toggle after this point it will toggle on the occurrence on the negative edge of q1 right so when the negative edge of q1 came it toggles and it toggles but again they are pulled back low so when they are pulled back low in fact if any one of them had been pulled back low it would have reset right so it will wait for the next clock pulse and then it will reset to zero again now see the count this is how it operates now see the count zero 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 so what is happening 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then 0 again that is what we wanted a modulo 10 counter or a bcd counter or a decade counter 0 1 counting like this q8 q4 q2 q1 q8 q4 q2 q1 this is 0, 0, 0, 0. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 0 again. So, this is how a BCD ripple counter works or a decade counter works. Now, we can utilize this decade counter in a very nice manner. And what we will get, we will see in the next, next slide. We have seen the asynchronous ripple BCD counter just now. We can design the synchronous BCD counter also that we will do a little later. Using any of the above two, we can design n decayed counter, right? Like this. You employ this entire BCD counter as a block, and so this will count the unit places, right? It will count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And after 9, when Q8 goes 0, you see, when this Q8 goes 0, the negative edge of Q8, that will be the counting pulse for the, sorry, that will be the counting pulse for the next BCD counter. So, what will happen? Count pulses, if it starts, if all of them had been reset to 0 in order to make things simpler. So, one, uh, one, the first negative edge comes, it becomes 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3. I'm talking about, you know, it's decimal equivalent. So it will go all the way till 9, 1, 0, 0, 1. After 9, what happens? This goes 0, but this one is incremented, right? So this becomes 10. And then this one retains 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. After 19, what will happen? It will go 0, but this one will go up and will become 2 right because this is being triggered by the negative edge of q8 so now it becomes 20 you know the equivalent decimal equivalent will be 20 then 21 22 23 so on 29 then 30 then 39 49 59 69 79 89 99 after 99 what, what will happen when the count clock pulse comes it gets reset to 0 but it increments it if it gets incremented what will happen it will reset to 0 but it will increment this decayed counter right so now this will become 1 so 100 0, 0 means 100 in decimal then 101 102 103 104 so on 109 after that this gets reset to 0 and this becomes 1 so that will be 110 Likewise, it will continue till 199. After 199, this gets 0, this gets 0, this becomes 2. Right? Then 299, it becomes 300, 400, 500, 60. It continues until we have a count of 999 in there. Right? And this 999, when the next count pulse comes, now it will get reset to 0. So this becomes a modulo 1000 counter or you know a three decade counter tens the units digit tens digit hundreds digit right 
and what I have written here we can use the BCD to 7 segment decoder at the output of this and you we have already designed designed a BCD to 7 segment decoder so you employ one such decoder over here so what you can do you can get a display of what all is stored here right an A digit display when a zero is, is here we will get A B C D E F you know G will be missing right uh, no A B C D E F yeah G will be missing so a zero will be displayed right and again this design is modular so if you want to make it a four decade counter that means you want to count up till 10,000 right on the count of 10,000 it will get reset to zero in that case you can have another such BCD counter here and Q8 of this counter will feed as the count pulse for the fourth decade counter right so you can have as many decade counters as you want to have every decade counter that you add that will add one digit of decimal to be counted 10,000, 100,000 and then you know a million then 10 million, 100 million, a billion you go on adding and a decade keeps getting added right so that is how you can have n decade counter using the BCD counter that we have designed over here either this one the BCD ripple counter or the synchronous BCD counter that we will design later and if you employ this BCD to 7 segment decoder at the outputs of these uh, BCD counters, then you can also display what all is count, what all count is stored here in those 7 segment displays. Right? So we will stop here. We will continue from this point onwards on the next turn. Thank you very much.